Hi, my name is Cody Kosterman, and today I'll be demonstrating some of the new features in the HTML5 plugin from Pure Storage for the VMware vSphere client. So let's take a look at some of the features of this new plugin to get you started with it. So the first step, of course, is installing the plugin. The delivery mechanism has not changed between the old Flash slash Flex plugin and the new HTML5 one. As you can see, it's currently not installed in the vSphere client. So let's jump over to one of my flash arrays to push it from that flash array to vCenter. So I'll go to Settings, Software, and vSphere Plugin. I'll then add in the IP information or FUDN or domain name as the case may be for my vCenter and add an administrative user. My vCenter environment has two vCenters in enhanced link mode. So I'm going to want to install it into both of those vCenters. So I'll repeat this process twice. This is going to reach out to the vCenter and see, okay, what version of the plugin is currently installed, if any. And it's going to run some pre-checks to make sure it can go ahead and install, upgrade, or so forth, depending on what's actually loaded on the array. In this case, I have my 4.0.0 version of the HTML5 plugin loaded. So I'm going to install this. What this is going to do is register the plugin as an extension in vCenter. So the next time someone logs in, it can load that extension into the interface. Now, one of the things to remember about this is it's not, not a connection that's maintained from the flash rate of vCenter. All this feature does, what we're watching here, is just register the extension. It does not keep this connection information on the array. There's no need to reach out back to vCenter. This is simply a way to install the plugin into the vCenter. I know there's been some confusion about that in the past. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I did it for my .38 vCenter. Now I'm going to do it for my .39. And go ahead and install the plugin so it's available regardless of which vSphere client I log into in those vCenters in enhanced length mode. So it's going to run through the same checks and confirm that it's ready to be installed. So go ahead and hit install and this is going to register that extension. If you have multiple vCenters or something like that and you log into one and it's not there, it's probably because somebody missed installing it in one of your vCenters. So make sure you do it to each one you want to use the plugin. So the process is just about complete. And then we can jump over to vCenter and start using it. Cool, it's all done. So let's jump over to vCenter. All right, so you notice I haven't logged out of the client. This is kind of one of the nice changes about the HTML5. You don't need to log out and log back in to load the client. If you look at the task, you'll actually see that the plugin is currently downloading and installing into the vSphere client. You can see my 400 HTML5 one has been installed and ready, and it's finished. On the top, you'll see this notification saying, hey, we've got a new plugin. You want it? Great. So you can click that refresh browser, and the plugin will now be loaded into your session. So we confirm that it's installed by going to menu, and we can see the pure storage icon there under the integrations. If we click on it, we see that my array is there. Why are my arrays there? I haven't authenticated anything. Well, our old Flash plugin was actually still installed. We never uninstalled it. We kept it there in case someone wants to use it. You can see it listed there. But currently, it's incompatible with the HTML5 interface you're logged into. But the 4001 is now there. And not only is it compatible and enabled, it's also certified. So this does appear in the VMware compatibility guide. And so the both plugins share those same authentications. So if you've already authenticated your array in the old Flash one, they'll be there. If you have it, and this is a new install, you want to re-authenticate. So now let's create a host group. So I'm going to right-click on my cluster, choose iSCSI. If I want to rename the host group or the host to the objects on the array, I can do that. And that's going to go to the Flash array. It's going to create those host objects, add their IQ, iSCSI IQNs, and configure them so we can start provisioning. Optionally, since I selected the, uh, the iSCSI option, it will configure the hosts with all the iSCSI target information. So now let's create a data store. So I'm going to choose one of my arrays, the one I just created a host group on. I'm going to give it a data store name and a size. Optionally, you can also specify a volume group or a pod name there too. So this is going to take, create a volume, connect it, and rescan the hosts in parallel, and then format it with the version of VMFS you specified right there. So we can see the data store has indeed been created and connected. Cool. So let's look at some of the other options and features inside of the plugin. So one of the things we put a lot of changes in is to insight into your storage. So if we click on one of my data stores and go to the summary tab, we see a new built-in pane here 
that shows information, what pod it's in, what volume group, data reduction, how many snapshots, serial number, some basic information. If we click on one of these links, and there's a few of them, this will take us to the capacity page. You can also go there by going to monitor, computer storage, and capacity. There's a couple numbers here. How much is being used by VMware? How much has actually been allocated by the files, VMs, and virtual disks? Post written? This is how much we see, the flash array, has seen written to that volume before data reduction. And this last number here says, all right, if I were to delete this data store, how much physical space I would get back? So that's the amount of space used after data reduction that's unique to that volume, giving you some more insights into the differences. We also have the snapshot panel here. So this is built into the configure tab. As you know, there's no pure storage tab anymore. Best practices around the vSphere client now should say, don't create your own tabs, natively integrate them to the existing tabs and options and panels. And so we can create snapshots, we can uh, copy to a new data store, we can re restore existing data stores, and of course we can delete those snapshots. Here I'm taking one of those snapshots, the one I just created, uh, creating a new data store and presenting it to just one host, right? I can present it to clusters, hosts, whatever. And so that's going to take that snapshot, copy to a writable volume, connect it, rescan, resignature, and then rename it to the name that I specified there. Once the rename is done, data store will be available and I can use whatever copy data I have on site, VMs, virtual disks, and so forth. You can also mount that on additional hosts or clusters. Um, so that'll connect it to this host or another cluster. You might want to have access to that data store. Of course, beyond just this, we can also resize it. We can rename it. We can delete it. We can add it to a replication group. There's a lot of other features in this plugin. So that's going to take that volume, connect it to whatever host. I think I specified 12 there. And then rescan it and make sure that's mounted on that host too. So now two hosts, both 11 and 12, has access to that data store. This has been a quick intro into some of the new features, and there's a lot more into the plugin. Stay tuned as we're adding a lot of features in the upcoming weeks and months into this plugin. Thanks a lot.